Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for Monster Hunter Stories 2. And today I want to put together an in-depth guide on the right of channeling. The ability to transfer moves from one monster to another. This is a system that you'll be introduced to pretty early on in the game. However, early on there won't be a great deal of stuff you will do with it. And honestly, in truth, you can kind of play throughout the whole game without ever touching this. Because a lot of the time, most of your min-maxing is kind of going to be done once you've decided on what your team is going to be. I mean, there's nothing to stop you doing this as you progress throughout the game, but given that you'll be consuming monsties to put into other monsties, then you may well kind of consider saving a lot of this until endgame. And on the surface, you can see the simple aspects of this as just being able to move one move from a particular monster to another monster that otherwise wouldn't have had that move. However, this does go a lot deeper. So today I want to try and uh, demystify all of that and just explain it as simply as possible. So if you do enjoy this, a like would be super appreciated. If you have any questions, by all means let me know in the comments down below. But to begin with, the very first thing you want to focus on is uh, just understanding the genes. So if you go into your menu and you go over to the field guides and you select the book of genes. Now this is is very very useful because as you progress throughout the game as you encounter monsters as you catch monsters you will encounter a variety of different genes think of genes as basically your moves some of them are active i.e you can use them some of them are passive i.e they will just give you bonuses increased health things like that and this book will of course fill up as you play throughout the game and you will see more things in here and it's just really useful because if you find a particular skill or a particular gene that you really really want to use when you hover over it, it tells you the compatible monsties and that of course tells you where they will come from. So if, for example, you were looking for an early skill and you were like, oh, I need three or four of these to stack, then you can go and pursue those particular monsties knowing that when you hatch them, they have a good chance of that skill showing up. So definitely use this as a means to not only look at the available skills and what they do, but also as a means to find out where they go. So with that being said, once you've done that, you then want to head over to your stables and you speak to the cat, the stable paw, and you go down to right of channeling. Now, to begin with, the first thing you will do is of course you will select the monster that you want to channel things into, i.e. the monster that you want to improve, and the second monster will be the one that gets consumed. Do keep in mind anytime you use the right of channeling and you take an ability from a monster and put it into another monster, the secondary monster, i.e. the one that you have taken the ability from, will be consumed and it will therefore be gone so don't suddenly go around thinking i'm going to copy this ability it is not a copy it is a cut think of it that way it's not control c it's control x so uh just keep that in mind anyway with that being said the very first thing you want to do is you want to pick your target monster now typically what you want to try and do is find a monster that has got a relatively open set of slots if you look at the gene map in the bottom right hand corner you will see that this comes in various different layouts these are of course the abilities the monster has most monsters will have some free slots. Sometimes the slots will be locked. They'll either be locked by level, and simply by leveling up to that level, those will be unlocked. And sometimes they are just locked with a padlock, and you use a item to unlock those ones. In order to do that, you back out of the menu and you go to use ritual items. These you can buy from the bottle cap vendor, you get them as rewards, you get them throughout the game, and using those on the correct type of monster will unlock those slots. So ideally, if you want to pick something, you will naturally pick the monster that you like, but if you have, say, multiple of that same monster, try to find one with a relatively uh, open gene map, so to speak. Now, following on from there, the very, very simple, most basic use of this mechanic is to simply move an ability from a monster to another monster. So if I pick something like this Killer Strike ability, it is a non-elemental ability from the Velocidrome, and I put it into my green Naga Kuga. I can, of course, slot it into any slot. Now, I'll speak about slots, colors, and all that stuff in just a moment, but to begin with, very, very basic. Doing this and having it move across now gives my Naga Kuga the ability from the Velocidrome, which is an ability it otherwise would not have had. So obviously this is a pretty basic example, but if you then went a step further and you took something like an Aptonoth and put an ability from, say, a Glavinus into it, then suddenly your Aptonoth is spitting fireballs or he's taking Aslos's thunder. You know, so you can use it to do some pretty fun, funky things. And of course, simply by moving it, you then have access to that move. So that is the very simple, basic version of this. Just using it to transfer a move. However, it does go a degree deeper because you will then be using this to power up your attack types, power up your attack moves. And the way you go about doing that is through the bingo system. So to try and explain this one, in your grid, you have a three by three grid. And if in any of your lines, whether that be a vertical line, a horizontal line, or a diagonal line, 
If they match up in color, so the color is the element, gray of course is non-elemental, red is fire, blue is water, light blue is ice, you've got dragon, thunder, as you would expect. Now when you go to insert a gene, you will see the uh, post channeling results over on the right. Now if you match up an elemental color, you will increase that damage type by a percentage. The first time you do it is 10%. You do get diminishing returns beyond a certain point, but basically by stacking multiple bingos, you can boost that attack type. And the same goes for the symbols as well. So of course the running man is speed, the strong man is power, and the two stars is technical. So you can get bingos in two ways. You can get bingos of elemental color and of attack type. And if you happen to have attack type with elemental color, you can double that up. You could get say a speed bingo with a non-elemental bingo if it was all gray and speed. And of course you will then use that sensibly. In an ideal world, you would try and get a good balance of speed, power and technical on your grid so that you can bolster all attack types in the event that you need to use different attacks in combat. In reality, it doesn't always work that way because you only have a limited number of slots you can play with. But the principle here is lining up the same colors or the same type of icons to try and get those bonuses. Now beyond this point is stacking the same type of genes. So sometimes you have of course a gene that you like, sometimes it might be a health thing, a passive thing, something else. But if you happen to have a monster with that same ability, you can then transfer that gene onto the same slot and it will then upgrade that gene. In doing so, it will of course upgrade the potency of it. In fact, if you go and inspect the skill, it will tell you exactly what it has done, the upgrade. And you can upgrade these twice. So basically, if your icon has a star on it, it's upgraded. You can do this twice to get two stars on it and you can then basically get the uh, fully upgraded version. So again, fast forwarding to endgame, ideally you would be in a position whereby your board is full of nicely lined up bingos, with of course matching icons, matching element colors, and upgraded icons where possible. Now outside of that, that's also where the rainbow genes come in. I'm sure you guys have seen these sometimes. The rainbow gene basically acts as whatever you need it to be. So you will typically slot it in the middle because it will of course often give you the most benefit. But if say you are in a position where say vertically you've got colors, horizontally you've got symbols. If you drop the rainbow in the middle, it will basically act as whatever it needs to be to complete that bingo. So think of it as a free node. It's very, very useful. And uh, definitely depending on kind of the setup you're trying to do, you can of course have multiple different angles. So rainbow genes are very useful. Definitely hold on to them. And uh, you know, sometimes they won't necessarily always yield the greatest benefit. In fact, if you're in a situation where say you're just bolstering one elemental type and you're just going full non-elemental or full fire, you often won't need it. But if you are in a position where you're trying to juggle different symbols, different elements, then the rainbow can have great benefits. Now, outside of that, there is another question that a lot of people often ask. It's something you were able to do in Monster Hunter Stories 1, and that is whether you can change the fundamental element of a monster. Now, I want to say yes and no. Uh, the reason I say that is because there is still some more testing that needs to be done, and I feel like there may well be some mechanics towards endgame that we just haven't discovered yet. The reason I say that is because we've been able to do it to a point, but then it doesn't work beyond that point. Allow me to explain. If you go back to the Monsterpedia and you take a look at any monster, you can see their default stat distribution. This isn't for your specific monster. This is just a monster by default. This is their stat distribution. And basically what determines the attacking element of a monster is whichever element is the highest. In other words, if you can bolster one of them to be higher, that will then take over as the lead element. Now that works if you do that on low level monsters. So for example, I can do something like take the fire plus gene M medium from a Yankaku and put it into an Aptonoth. In doing so, that boosts the Aptonoth's fire ability above its non-elemental ability. And as you can then now see by this icon here, its main attack type is fire. If I then go and do the Aptonoth's kinship skill, as an example, you can see the resulting explosion has a fire element here. So this is definitely possible. However, the interesting thing about this is that once the monster becomes a certain level, typically around sort of level 15, level 20, then the underlying kind of default element seems to just take over again. So quite whether this is something that needs to be done later on in the game does remain to be seen because we tried this with high level monsters. It doesn't seem to work the same way. So there's still some testing that needs to be done here. But for the time being, just for those of you guys that wanted to sort of know, it is possible to a degree to do this, but uh, there do seem to be some limitations at least right now. But for the time being, that is pretty much it. So top level, of course, your main strategy to think about is picking a monster that you like, working out what elemental type you will be leaning into, picking appropriate skills that you know are good, that you like, that will, of course, not only bolster your monster, but in doing so, also tick off loads of bingos in your maps so that you can then have your damage boosts by getting 
diagonal, horizontal, and vertical lines. Try where possible to bingo both the attack types, i.e. power, strength, and technical, as well as the attack element, and in doing so, you can have some really good results. Here's a few samples. I won't show you the monsties, just to kind of keep it spoiler free. Here's a few samples that Paradise Central has put together. You can see this is what a nicely laid out bingo board looks like if you really want to get the most out of your monstie. But for the time being, that's pretty much it. Hopefully that has helped clear some things up on the gene sort of uh, sharing, the gene splicing, the juicing up of monsters, the right of channeling. If you guys have any more questions, let me know. And otherwise, keep it locked for plenty more stories content. If you want to catch more from us at Arix Gaming, don't forget you can catch the guys 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch weekdays, playing a variety of games. If you guys want to jump in, tune in, watch, and even join in, then make sure you check them out. The links to those are in the description box down below. And of course, you can join the Discord to get involved in all of the discussions.